I'm just, I mean, cussing us out to no end. And then, <laughs> and then he proceeded to oh, reel yeah. up all his lines and then just drive through our spread trying to take out our baits, took our long That's awesome. Out. That's exactly what I would have done. That's fucking awesome. I respect uh, that guy. Uh, <laughs> takes, out, takes our shit out and then drives away. <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're like, thank God that's over. And then sure enough, he comes back for more. <laughs> he kept saying, you guys know better. You guys know better. <laughs> we're like, oh. We know better what. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin of the story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have five glass boats, he would have given us five glass trees. It's it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit, as yeah. far as if I can remember uh -huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back to State of Sport Efficient Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. I'm joined with me with my co-host, Anthony Pino, with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Today, our guest is JC, James Clear, Remix Sport Fishing, one of my best friends, just won really big tournament uh, this past weekend. And uh, before he gives his intro, <clears throat> we're just going to say thanks to everyone who supported and came by for the Miami Boat Show uh, last weekend. and. Uh, yeah, you want to add anything, Anthony? No, it's just cool to fun fun to hang out with you, buddy. It was a lot of fun to be there with the, you guys, the whole group, me and my brother. You guys were really accepting of us, and doing the boot together was was a lot of fun, and um, I think it worked out well. So I appreciate appreciate you guys having us, and found out that I was remarkably good at golf for not playing, <laughs> hitting a golf ball for ten years. Yeah, so. you were pretty good. <laughs> Wait, there was golfing at the boat show? No, we went to top golf one night. <laughs> oh wow. Anthony was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. He was I was blown away. <laughs> <laughs> I was blown away at how good I was. I had never uh, I haven't hit a golf ball in 10 years. The first one, I was like, holy shit. Look at that. <laughs> I yeah, missed my calling. Yeah, you're playing the you're in the wrong wrong field, yeah. buddy. What am I doing fishing? So uh, you can make a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, thank thanks to everybody who came to the live pod and thanks to Leo and you and Danae and Esther. That was a lot of fun, buddy. Good times. We'll do it again. But uh so let's bring it back, JC. Just uh give a little <clears throat> intro uh about yourself and how you got started. Uh you know, my name is JC Clear. Uh I run a boat called the Remix uh in Miami, uh, Coconut Grove. It's a 44 contender. We just got it a couple months ago, but um we, uh, you know, I've been fishing for a long time. Uh, I used to fish with just a few of my friends. We started doing good, you know, in the tournaments. And then uh, before you know it, better and better. And, and then, uh, you know, we started getting hired by by some private guys. But, I mean, not to date myself, but that was like 20 years ago. So, fast forward uh, a lot of years and, uh, you know, just fished with a lot of private guys. Fished with Nick for a lot, a lot of years, 15 plus years. Um and then uh, right up until last year. And then uh, last year, he left me. I cried for a little bit. <laughs> and uh, then uh, he started fishing on the front runner. I started fishing on the contender. And um, But everything's going good for both of us. And uh, we're doing the, I'm doing the charters um, and fishing the tournaments with, uh, with the guy who hires us for all of them. And uh, so far, so good. So we'll do a little... Before we dive into this tournament, earlier in the year, you came in second in the Gold Cup for the series. And what else down there in the Keys? Uh, we came in second uh, for the whole series. Um, I don't really remember what we did. Uh, it's, a, it's a series of three tournaments, but I think we came in, um, you know, second in one, second in another. I'm not sure what the other one was, but overall, uh, second in the series. Um, and then we did the uh, the Miami Billfish, um, and uh, I believe we came in second in that. Oh, it's not one hundred percent sure, uh, but I think it was second in that. Um, that was a pretty big tournament out of Miami that they're doing now. And then uh, that's it. The first quest of Operation Sailfish up in Palm Beach. Um, we did all right. We had a we had a big big multiple right in the end there. We had seven fish on. Um, we ended up only catching I think four of them 
but uh it was really slow fishing so that helped us out you know big time in the in the quest for the course i think we came in like ninth overall but um points wise it helped us just because we were really really stinking the whole tournament so that last half hour catching those fish kind of boosted us way up and then uh this past weekend we ended up stars aligned and uh we won that second quest tournament this weekend out of miami so ah, slow down slow down no, no, slow down no, no, slow no, down no. He's trying to speed his way through it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to talk about you, like <clears throat> you guys fishing together for a little bit, and then, and then now he's he's running a boat and yeah, he's... we fished uh, we fished on a lot of different boats actually. Uh, we fished with Ray Rocher a long, long time ago. Uh, Early days. The, yeah, that was a long time ago, and then uh, we fished on the Rockstar together. A free bird. I think our Hellraiser. biggest our biggest payout for a while was with Ray. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was. We we won. I don't remember. I don't. I, was that the Miami like tournament? Two twenty. Uh, it was like the Chris King tournament. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we won one. like two twenty or two thirty. Yeah, so that was like our biggest win for a long time, and then. And then the Jimmy Johnson on the Hellraiser when JC was running that Spencer boat, we won. Well, we went two forty. Yeah, something like that. Two forty-five. That was, that was nice too. Yeah, we, we've won a lot of stuff together. I wish we could just have it all right now, but <laughs> somehow all that money just gets dispersed everywhere. But we, yeah. we've won a lot of stuff together over the years on a lot of different boats. So, um, how do you guys? I mean, it's you two, and then how many guys? Do you guys, I mean, I, obviously you guys probably have like a handful of people that like you call, you call when you decide whether you get hired and you need a couple more hands or you have, have the guys or, or you have the anglers that come with the boat maybe. Um, how's like, how do you develop that sort of ability to stay consistent? Like you guys have had, like, I mean, it seems obviously the people are super important, but some of those people are half or interchangeable you know as, as programs come and go you know yeah i think you got to keep the, the you think you got to keep like a core uh pretty similar throughout the years and then you know if you if you got a core uh three guys two guys definitely two three guys um that kind of stick with you for a few years um you know and then if you need a fourth guy if he can stay around for a year or two or you know even if not um but i think that core group um the more they stick around, the better you do. I mean, you know, you, there's a lot of boats out there and everybody's, you know, flying the same bait, same tackle, same everything. Um, everybody's got a really nice boat. Um, but I think the, the the core group really means a lot in the end. You know, just you kind of know what everybody's already thinking, what everybody's going to do. You just kind of have a, a chemistry. And I feel like without that, it um, doesn't work out as good as often. You know, you might put a group together of, of five really good guys. You might win a tournament, but, um, you know, it just doesn't happen as often as, like, the same team, I think. You know, yeah, could yeah. be wrong, I mean, but that's what I think. I don't know. Like, in, you know, trolling, there ain't no real big secrets as far as, like, you know, how you're fishing or anything like that. It's just who can do it better once you get to a certain level, in my, my yeah. opinion. And, and I think having the right people – is super important and having the right people that you know you talked about the operation up in up in palm beach you know you had a big multiple at the end and uh you know having people be be able to stay with you like it's one thing if the captain isn't given up but it's another thing if like the guys downstairs they're right with you and then at the end of the day you guys see six and you catch four whatever it may be yeah I mean, that's, that's huge to have those, have those guys with you mentally, you know, as well as just being there over the years, but over the course of a day, just being in it. Cause I've known you just explained that and Nick, it, I, what was it? Um, I think it was operation two, where you maybe, or it's the silver sailfish where you kind of came from behind. How do, how do you guys, is it something that you guys like scope out per people's personality that you you know they're not going to give up or or do they just kind of is it just do you just force it upon them i assume nick forces upon them but i don't know about how uh, have a different style, 
<laughs> no, I think you just kind of surround yourself with with the right people, and you, I mean, you can figure it out pretty quick who who's who wants it as bad as you and who doesn't. And uh, you know, that's just the people you kind of try to stick with and, and whatever. And you know, the more you fish with that same group, you know, if they've. I mean, I've been in a ton of situations where with Nick, or you know, we're not doing well, but it's like we've come from behind so many times and won a ton of stuff. So, you know, like the possibilities right there. So, you know, like you've already done it a bunch of times. So that's why, you know, like, Oh, you know, it doesn't matter if we're down five fish, like and there's an hour left. It doesn't really matter because we've done this a dozen times and it's worked out and we've caught them. So it's yeah. not, you know, that's how yeah, you kind of know not to give up. I remember like a long time ago, I used to think like being down, you know, if you're down five or six fish, you're like, Oh, we're out of it. But you know, now you, you're down that mm-hmm. and you're like, that's yeah, no way. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not out of it at all. You know, it's just one multiple or yeah. two, two doubles or two triples. And you're just, you're, you know, you're right back. Cause you know, now the, the competition now, there's so many good guys that you'll just yeah. see if it's not one of us, you'll see someone else, an art, a Q still right. Yeah. You know, they just come out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, and it's not – people just don't catch one anymore. Yeah, you're right. Everybody's so good now. It's like if you get – if you just get one shot at a fish, so many people can turn that one into four, like, before you know it. So that's why it's it's scary. And it's like, you know, you never really feel comfortable winning, and you never really feel like you're losing, and they're, you know, literally until it lines out. So you know, a lot of things can happen real quick. Yeah. I mean, and then even just this past weekend, I mean – knowing the situation that you were in, I mean, JC was pretty much in the lead the in, from the first second till the end. So just the, the nerve. Yeah, it's like the worst yeah, position the you worst. can be in. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it looks it awesome. It, it's, it's, yeah. it, it probably looked awesome at the end of the tournament where you're like, yeah, yeah. we were on top the entire time, but it, at the, at no, the it's you know, during the tournament, I'm sure it's like, Oh my God, we if we don't keep this up, we're just going to lose this, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's, that, hard. We, it's hard to once you're up, <clears throat> once you're winning to keep, keep at the number one is, is hard. So, yeah. And let me ask you guys yeah. this. Let me ask both of you guys this. You know, you guys fish together and you guys now have your own teams. What's the, like, when you're at the beginning of the tournament or, you know, at the beginning of the season, like, is there an expectation? Like, if we, if we don't win this, any if we don't win this tournament or this series it's just basically a failure is it like that or is, are you guys a little bit more open than that like maybe maybe instead of that maybe like if we're in the top 10 i i for me up in ocean city if if i'm in the top 10 percent, i'm feeling pretty good about my week and maybe maybe some things didn't go right that you know maybe it was bad luck or maybe it just we we missed a, an opportunity or I was in the wrong spot for a half a day. Like, but even top 10, you know, because at the end of the day, the owners and the participants and the anglers are kind of doing this for fun as much as being competitive and for the money. Like you gotta have something to cling to other than winning because one one in my opinion, only one person wins, but maybe yeah. that's a lose loser's mindset according, you know. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. Nick might school me on something different. <laughs> Oh, I'll let you take that. No, you got it. <laughs> I mean, I don't like losing, but I don't know. I mean, nobody, le- <laughs> but nobody yeah, but like, does, you know, nobody wants yeah. to lose. But I mean, yeah, I think in the beginning of the year, I mean, I always have aspirations to definitely win something. And when I say win, it really doesn't even have to be first place. I mean, you know, winning, you know, a daily or a second place or yeah. third, third place. I mean, th- those are all winning to me, you know? Um, so it's not really, uh, you know, what first place or, or we stink. Not, what he means to say is if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> no. <laughs> not true sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, after, after last week in Miami with you, I'm well aware of your attitude towards most things. So I'm well, well, well you know, aware of that. The, the problem is that I've won so much fishing with Nick that now I feel like I'm expected to win. So yeah, he I mean, ruined it. So he's kind of ruined it for me. Yeah. You definitely want to expect to win. It's just, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It is yeah, hard. You know, there, there's only one winner and there's what, 50, 60 boats in a lot of the tournaments you fish. Oh, you yeah. know, and 15, 20, and 15 of them are capable of winning on any day. 
you know? Oh, yeah. And there's so many moving parts, man, it's with, especially with kite fishing and live bait and dying bait and all kinds of just there's so many things that can go wrong that you got to make everything go right. And you know, everything's going to kind of line up for you. And, yeah. you know, even if, you know, I get 15 bites and Nick gets 15 bites, I mean, then the crew has to catch all 15 and, you know, everything's got to go right. I mean, nothing, nothing really ever goes perfectly right. So you just got to do the best that you can and, and hope that, you know, 90% of it goes right. You know, you gotta right. capitalize on all your situations, multiples, whatever it is. I mean, yeah. do you got to capitalize. Is there any, any limit in how many professionals the, those tournaments have on boats or is it just a, just full on whoever did yeah, this? Because like, no... I, I think my team this weekend probably would have exceeded the. <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> man, if, if if there was a limit, Nick just got kicked out of the tournament. <laughs> when I pulled up your boat, I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> I was like, "Come on, man!" <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tito said we didn't win because we had too many good guys on the boat. So. <laughs> yeah, man, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah you did have too many good guys so then, then what happened nick why were you not in the contention uh, <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> well they were 12 for 12 so i mean they did their job yeah you can so point point the blame at me <laughs> i mean we had <laughs> we just uh man we had a lot of we had eight singles eight nine singles typically if you have that many singles you're bound to get a multiple at some point but we were just you never... not seeing like they were there and did you have any answers where you just didn't get the bite or they weren't it was just all singles just every fish we saw we caught so just, i got you we weren't yeah just you know sometimes that's how it goes you know i mean yeah and even just even sitting even with the single we did wait and try to get another one to pop up mm -hmm. and just you know, it wasn't happening, you know, so it's how it goes, you know, I mean, yeah. if there yeah, was other that's... fish there, or, you know, <clears throat> if there was other fish there, we would have got them, but they just, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were, yeah. I had the right guys throwing spinners on the bait, you know, throwing in the spread, it just, yeah, they weren't, you know, so I throw another yeah. fish there, and that's how it goes. That, that That's, uh, that's what I mean when I say that, you know, everything's got to line up, I mean, I know how Nick fishes, and he knows how I fish, and I'm sure we were probably doing the exact same thing. And I mean, if I didn't get multiples, we wouldn't know what we would have been in the last place. I mean, we had the first thing in the morning, we had six fish on. I mean, that's pretty rare, definitely for the first thing in the morning. But I mean, there was, it just happened that way. You know, it wasn't like anything special, but, you know, we had a couple doubles. I mean, if those things don't line up and happen for you, there, there's really nothing different that you can do to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there are things you can do to make a multiple happen. But, you know, I know that, you know, a lot of the guys are doing the same exact thing to make it happen. So, you know, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And were you guys <clears> fishing <throat> next to each other or within, like, around each other? Or were you in a completely different area, JC? Uh, for a little bit, we were near each other. And then just kind of, you know, the current was ripping. So, you know, I think they kind of drifted up the line a little bit. And I was fighting the current a little bit to stay. But um, in the same area for a little while. And then, you know. No, I mean, but not like you know, fifty miles apart. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Just kind of within within yeah, I mean, eye, we, eye shot. I mean, yeah, the first, I guess, little bit we were kind of, you know, within sight of each other, but then, um, but yeah, not. Yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing like oh, it's, it's crazy on fire up there, and it's not here. I mean, I, I think the fish were kind of pretty much just spread out everywhere. I mean, you could get bites. I mean, Nick got a bunch of bites way north of us and, and we really had the same amount of bites it just our instead of ours being a single you know with a double or whatever it was so that's the yeah. difference you know i mean you were all the way down in fifth nick but you were only three fish behind yeah exactly like it wasn't that's what i'm saying it wasn't yeah it's, <clears throat> so yeah. you know it, you know he probably had more you know if he had seven singles on one day you know we didn't have that we didn't have like seven encounters we might have had three encounters but they were all multiple so yeah, i mean yeah. You know, it's just, it's just I the say the bulls are, I say all the way down in fifth, but it's still 50, yeah. 50, 50 <laughs> all the way. You did, you did fine, Nick. Don't beat yourself up too bad. <laughs> First place loser, they call it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. All these tournaments, man, they, they all, you know, everybody, you know, something happens during the day and you miss a fish 
and it's like, oh, don't be, you know, don't be mad or don't let it get you. But man, that fish always comes back to bite you. It's oh, yeah. they all come down to one or two fish every time. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Oh yeah. So they come back to get you. Yeah. But you can't yeah. let it when you're in the, you know, what are you gonna do? Like once it's done, yeah, no. you have to, have yeah, to you move on to it. Yeah. can't can't stew on it or you'll just you'll just fuck no, yourself yeah, you ruin the, rest, ruin the, the rest of the day yeah exactly yeah, you, you can't stew on it but at the end of the day like if <laughs> like if you were to miss something you know you're gonna be like fuck that one fish <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's happened uh couldn't even tell you how many times yeah yeah it happens and then happens. so i i texted you after the first day and I said you couldn't get down to the keys fishing. How far was that? That good fe- keys fishing oh, that was boundary. Far. It was far. We could. I got you. Our south boundary was Triumph, and I think that was like Sombrero. I think. I got. Yeah. I don't know where those. Where I don't know. It's about. probably <laughs> how many miles is that? It's far. Yeah. yeah okay. I didn't know if it was just over the boundary or what. Man, if this uh, was a no boundary tournament, there would have been sixty boats down there. Yeah. That would have. That would have been crazy. Been, that would have been ridiculous. So yeah, yeah next, so then two weeks we have the Jimmy Johnson and I don't know what the South Boundary is for that, but it's pretty no, far. I think down it's there. like it's like Europe to Japan or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's far. Uh, Do you guys prefer the 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 tournaments with a more a smaller boundary or the bigger bigger ones? I like mm. smaller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the smaller too. That, those big boundaries, that's tough, man. You can't really. I mean, a lot of it is skill, but I mean, that really, it kind of cuts a little bit out of it. Cause I mean, if you just make one wrong turn, I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are. You're, you're not going to, yeah. And like, you're not, you ain't doing it. Yeah, so it kind of stinks, you know, it, you know, if you put everybody within like reaching distance of each other and you know, you're, you you got a good team, you know, you have a chance to get in the right area and, and, and show that you're better than somebody or like, you know, but, it leaves a lot you know, up to luck when like, yeah it just happens the conditions happen the yeah and good, everything good changes Paul overnight. that day versus miami you know yeah. and, and you know no matter how much pre-fishing you do that stuff changes yeah it's yeah. crazy how fast overnight it's just yeah it just oh, saturday the first the first day of this tournament friday i mean it it, it looked horrible uh down tell, where yeah, the fish were tell, and then the, talk about a little bit about you guys's method leading up to the tournament you know we talked a little bit before at the boat show nick about pre-fishing stuff like that but talk about you guys talk about what you're what you're looking for and how important it is to get out there with your guys and 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 get in a good rhythm well just uh i mean just for like this tournament like jc was say like about to say it was uh you know i think i think probably current and blue water or bluer water the two kind of first things we're kind of aiming for or hoping for uh and like from one day to the next conditions you know, right from conditions 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 You're right. i just showed anthony the and i just showed anthony oh, yeah? the video oh man Did you, I, I i used your line yesterday so <laughs> they interviewed jc yesterday and supposedly yeah they interviewed me and i, I wasn't yeah, they put me on the spot. I wasn't ready, and I just—that's what I came up with. <laughs> uh, when in doubt, conditions. Conditions. That's the goat. That's like the fall backwards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like this past tournament, um, we both ran all the way down, made it pretty much to the south boundary, and then it looked not good, and we made our way back up to the north, and that's ended up where the fishing was. And then the second day of the tournament, it completely changed. It looked kind of horrible where all that good fishing was the first day uh, and was good down South. But then I kind of made my way back up there. Cause I heard the current was filling back in up there. So that's when I kind of made my move back up there and um, we, we definitely caught some fish, but uh, just not enough, but, uh, seem the condition down south was, <clears throat> was pretty good. I mean, it was good everywhere. I think there was fish up. Yeah, there it kind of was good everywhere. Yeah, it was good everywhere. But from one day to the next, it definitely changed a lot, a lot, a lot. So that's why you know that pre-fishing, pre-fishing is awesome. And I mean, I think it's more to get 
you know, work all the kinks out and go through, you know, some things with the crew and just kind of do it a, a couple of days before you just go out there and do it, you know, because some other crew doesn't really fish every day. Um, like, you know, yeah. I think it helps me because with the chartering now, it's like, man, I, I fished six days in a row before the tournament, like in the same yeah. places, you know, there, there, you know, there's, there's only, you know, out of Miami, I'd say there's, you know, four or five different, like really good spots. And I fished all of them every day for six days. So even though things change, you kind of get a little bit of a feel for it. Um, yeah. But you still do that pre-fishing. I mean, you, you do that pre-fishing. You go right back to where you caught 10 the day before and there's nothing. But it, it's still good just to get out there and kind of go through the motions with everybody and catch a couple, whether it's two or 10, and just just get everything going before you really do it. You know? Yeah, you're going to yeah, learn JC something has either the, way. JC has the unfair advantage now because he's literally out there every single day now. So Hey, buddy. Yeah. That's... I used to say it. I used to say it about Q and Ray. Be like, man, it's not fair. They've been fishing all these days in a row. And now I'm like, eh, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like it's not so bad <laughs> no i mean it's just part of it man you're out there and <clears throat> i mean i'm sure nick felt it a little bit if you're not out there it just takes that like a little bit longer to assess the conditions you're like man maybe this looks okay you know maybe i give it a little longer whereas you you are probably a little bit more aware of it because you're out there every day you're just it's you know people think that like this is fishing well and being a being a, a, a quality competitive fisherman is like some sort of magical thing that comes to people sometimes <laughs> yeah. you know and it's not yeah. it's just like any other oh. sport where you literally have to go in there and put put in the work and, and practice at it you know and it, yeah. it's a learn it's a learned skill it's like yeah i mean there's people that are are gifted at it but you know if you're out there if you really want to do it and you think about things enough and you have enough chances to be out there then you can be good at it too you know i mean yep. there's yeah you just need you just need either need to be charter fishing or you need to have the the person with the money behind you that's going to say yeah. go, go fucking fish, do it. yeah exactly you know? yeah it's yeah. definitely a, a learned a, lear, a learned skill that people you can do it if you have the chances to do it but it ain't a, it ain't a cheap sport so there's only a couple of different ways to do it yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it gives you a big advantage <clears throat> sure did what, you feel uh, that this weekend nick when you're like man like i i mean you, you pre-fished a little bit right yeah we pre-fished <laughs> we we're out there and uh um no it felt good it definitely felt good to at least be in miami for this one after palm beach um <laughs> so it felt good to at least be in our backyard and like even to the north I mean, I known that even the week prior, JC was catching all those fish, like kind of like right out front Miami. And that's kind of why I went back there just cause I was like, man, like I know JC and another charter guy, Dean, they've been catching fish there for like a week straight. So I mm -hmm. figured I had a pretty good chance at the end of the day when I kind of made my way up there and, and I was the only one up there. I was like, Oh my gosh. I was like, I could really, <laughs> I could really put it on them now, but you know, we ended up catching a few fish, which was good, you know, got us back up in the top five. Um, but just, you know, we needed a couple more, you know, we just didn't, we just needed a couple more bites, but, um, but yeah, that's whatever. I mean, it was still, still a good finish. You know, there's a lot of boats, a lot of good guys. So I'm definitely, you know, happy to at least end where we did, you know, yeah. see the disappointment fish, in your eyes. Nah, fifth out of sixty, man. That's that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, it's, it's, hard. it's so hard, man. There's so many boats, and this tournament, the boundaries are who knows how many miles, and there's so many good guys. So I'm yeah. saying everything's just got to line up perfect, man. Yeah. No matter what bait, no matter like all that stuff matters, but in the end, I mean, everything's got to be. You got to have a little bit of luck on your side, you know. No matter how good everybody is. When you guys talk about current, I, this is I've I've been meaning to ask this question for like the longest time. When you are talking about current, are you talking about current that like when it's you say it pushes in, are you talking about current that's moving to the north or move or spin like kind of spins and goes the opposite direction to the south? Going north. Like blue water, going north. So you're just you just want the Gulf Stream to push it a little bit in and give you something over some good bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We necessarily didn't have much for bluer water, I guess. I mean, I guess it did look bluer down south. 
compared to like what it did up north but mm-hmm. it, we definitely had a lot of good current which you know i like you know i think we both could agree that you know just good north current mm-hmm. is kind of what what we want you know i got you yeah i think if you had to pick between blue water and current you take the current over the water color yeah. i got you I think just if not you're just bobbing around in one spot all day yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, you're drifting yeah at least because at least if you got a lot of current you know you're covering a lot of ground like this yeah, yeah. this week man like the boats were moving man like yeah I mean, you could you could be you know in one area and be in an hour later you're like in another area code mm-hmm. you know which is and then yeah. like when you work a spot now uh, probably getting a little too too deep like if you're working a spot like if one drift doesn't work out but you feel good about it do you reset and go a different like a different maybe a little different depth or something like that yeah yeah you just... you gotta give it a give it a few tries yeah, yeah. Give it a few swipes and <laughs> different you know different depths different areas mm-hmm. and then you know once you once you find, you know, you get a bite or you get a multiple or you get, you see something, you know, that kind of like hones you in a little bit closer to that perfect depth. And then, you know, you either really find it or, you know, you, you, you can kind of cancel out that depth. You know, you do a couple of depths, a couple of drifts in, in a certain depth, you know, catching it and you're like, Hey, you know, they're not there. So let's yeah. try something else. You know, sometimes it's, it's okay to do bad. Even the pre-fishing. I mean, you go out and fish a whole day, you don't catch anything pre-fishing. I mean, it's not a really a bad thing. I mean, it just tells you just don't go there. You know, you can you can rule something out as much as you can rule yeah. something in. You know, so. Yeah. But I mean, we on the second day we, we found a little area and it was a wreck and, and we did a couple of drifts by it and every time we drifted by it we we got a bite. So, you know, for a couple of hours where you just fought the current and uh, just kind of sat right on on this wreck and, and kept getting bites. So. You know that was you know that's a, that's the thing you know we we drifted by there three times and every time we drifted by we got a bite but then when we passed it we wouldn't get a bite so you know we're like let's let's kind of try to fight a little bit and, and hold on and it was you know the current was going three four miles an hour so it doesn't sound like a lot until you're trying to fight to stay on a spot it feels like you're you know you're almost on a plane so <clears throat> but it, it worked out or if you're working an area that does look good and you don't get a bite but if it does look good, you're probably going to see someone else catch a fish. So yeah, either know you know that that's good because there are some fish there, uh, so you keep working it, or maybe you just can't figure it out and like me and just get the hell out of there and <laughs> go find a new spot. You left because JC was kicking your ass. You went somewhere else. <laughs> well, every, everybody was JC, and there's a bunch of other guys catching fish down there, and I just wasn't really getting the bites so i just kind of went back up to where we were getting them so but yeah i just had to, <laughs> had to get out of there yeah. yeah sometimes it's just when you're watching other people catch fish they just you can't yeah you just can't take it anymore he's got to be it's like know you know there's fish uh, there but you're like i don't want to catch these fish they, Let's they, catch they, them they, they definitely don't have my name written on it you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know the feeling well buddy i just like giving you crap it's uh, fun that's uh, that's funny i mean I mean, you could literally like that, especially a second there. I mean, I was literally in a pack of boats. Like I knew I was in the right area, but we just weren't getting bit. So I was just like, all right, well, these ones aren't. Do you ever ever get to, do you ever get to a place like, you know, like there's a couple spots in shallow. I don't do very well shallow at home, but there's some people that do really, really well in like 50 fathoms at home. Like, like some older, like more, like older guys like do what they used to do or still do a lot of bottom fishing they know the bottom real well uh do you like if, if you go to a spot and you see q there are you like this is this is just his spot like uh, i just know that this is you know well, he JC, knows jc pulled up in, J- in q's spot on the first day and the sixth <laughs> thing. oh okay oh uh, yeah q, that is q spot. q was at his spot all by himself and then jc <laughs> rolled in and caught a six finger so you can imagine how uh, cute <laughs> i had to hear about it on the oh, phone for man. two days yeah, I, can't, you know. I can't believe you did that i keep right into my spot i was there all by myself <laughs> all, all happy and come jc oh my gosh that was uh 
Yeah, and how I <laughs> and now you say it, I feel bad. Did you did you leave after you caught the six bagger? That would have been the best if you just like caught uh, the six yeah. bagger and then you, left. You know what? We actually didn't stay very long. I was on the phone with him even before lines in, and I was like, man, it was me and him, and and there was a couple of the boats. So you know, everybody's kind of sitting on this one. We call it the boil. And, uh, you know, there's always kind of a, a few fish hanging around there, even if conditions aren't good. I mean, there's always a resident yes, living around. Yes, and I was, I told him before lines in, I said, man, you know, one of us here is going to get the bites, you know, right at lines in, you know, because that just happens all the time. There's a couple spots like that. Um, and he's like, yeah, I know. He's like, one of us is going to get it. And I was like, all right, man. I was like, well, good luck. And man, the, the literally lines in, we were putting them out and that was, that was actually the first bite. We caught one fish, like as the spread was going out. And I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "He's probably hates me." And then uh, <laughs> that was it. And then we set back up one more time. And and uh, actually, a crazy story. I was looking at the, the the depth machine, and man, perfect boomerang looking sailfish on there. And I was like, "Man!" I was like, "There's no way that's what that could be." And I told uh, Chris, one of the mates, I said, "Man, he had a flat line down deep." And I said, "Hey, wind that up." You know, wind it up a little bit, and when he wound it up, and the you could see it coming up, and the whole pack of fish was following that thing. One eight, one eight his, and, and then the rest of the pack ate the whole spread. And so that was a six banger. And then uh, that was it, my boy. Yeah, we were we were right next to a couple boats. So they like and, if they come, did they come like right to the back of the boat. And oh they, yeah, and then they swim out to the, all the way to the long kite. Yeah, I mean, I, wow. I guess it was, you know, you can't really tell how many fish are there, but I always yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. there's a lot more than what you see. So, yeah. I mean, we saw, you know, four or five fish chasing one bait, and then before you knew it, every single bait had a fish on. So, um, but yeah, that was the that was a six banger. But it was crazy. I mean, usually when that happens, I mean, <clears throat> the boats around you will get get some leftover bites, but that was it. I mean, we were, you know, when you fish on that spot, people are, you know, hundred feet from you. They're really close. Um, and nobody really got a bite. I don't think, I think you might've got one out of that, but you would think with that many fish. So it's crazy. I think on that spot, they just kind of hang out down deep and they pop up, eat and then go back down. I don't think those are really like traveling fish or you know, moving down the line. Yeah, that, was, so, that, was a, that was a big jump start. So he, so JC catches the five, six banger or whatever it is. And he calls me and we caught a couple singles or something. And, He's like, he's like, you wouldn't believe what happened. He, and he tells the story he just told, you know, that we, I marked them perfectly on the sonar or whatever. So Jeff's in the tower with me. And I tell, I tell Jeff the story of how JC just marked them and then raised all those fish. So whatever, we're fishing. We caught a couple of fish, a couple of singles here and there, whatever. And like later in the day, we have like a couple perfect boomerangs on the sonar. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, oh, Jeff. I'm like, look at this. And, <laughs> Alex is holding the flat line and Alex, I'm like, Alex, I'm like, crank up that flat line. You know, I'm like, I'm like looking at Jeff. I'm like, I'm like, watch, we're going to get a big multiple. Uh. So Alex starts cranking it up. I'm like, yeah, wind it nice and slow. Looking at the stone. I'm like, oh, this looks nice. He, he cranks it up and he reels it up and there's just like a perfect little thread there. <laughs> and me and Jeff look at each other. We're like, we're like, uh. looks about right. And then we like look back at the spread and like a 40 pound king airs out on the shore. <laughs> yeah, and that's normally what it is. We're like, perfect. That worked out well. Yeah. Normally in Miami, those marks are bull sharks and kings. It's never that. So. I was going to ask yeah. how, like, how often do you guys do? You, I mean, obviously you probably have it to keep on the depth, depth, but do you guys like, is it a big part of how you fish? Because I know fishing down there is a visual. Like I'm sure you look at it, but you're not like glued to it. I I would assume. What the depth? Yeah, the bottom machine, like the. Uh yeah, I just look at it really just for the depth. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because you know you catch one at one thirty, you kind of hang out there. But I never really look at it to actually see a fish. That just happened to just, see yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened actually to me. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well, more nice, nice yeah. surprise. Yeah, depth and. If you mark bait too, you know, you're kind of like, oh, yeah. a lot of bait here or something. But yeah, I don't know how often you mark them like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Never. Uh, yeah. 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 But it was funny. I was like, uh, when it did, it happened to us, me and Jeff were like, I'm like, oh, we're going to get them. Like, <laughs> big kingfish. Uh, <laughs> so funny. 
I remember like Alex reeled it up and there's just like a perfect thread just swimming right by the boat. And we're like, anybody there? Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, it's pretty funny. It was awesome. I told JC, we had a good, we were up off haul over all by ourselves. There's no tournament boat around us. And there's like this, we saw a flopper on the other side of this, I guess it was a, a charter boat or something. And especially with the tournament guys, in Palm Beach a lot, especially, you know, sometimes you get really, really close to obviously tournament boats and sometimes just non-tournament boats, you get really close. And <laughs> typically, especially like non-tournament boats, typically they don't really ever really say anything. Well, this guy, I mean... <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> Did not like, appreciate you sliding in there. Dude, it mm. I mean it's like it's like I like we shot a shotgun at his boat or something. That's how mad was he trolling or was he was he was he live baiting? He was live baiting, but like out of the rigors. No kites. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Like just slow trolling. I got gotcha. this guy. I mean, so and I like kind of like put the like because of and he didn't even see the flopper. That's the thing. Like <laughs> he was just <laughs> So we put the baits like literally on each side of his boat. <laughs> and this guy just came unglued. I mean, <laughs> I just, I mean, cussing us out to no end. And then, <laughs> and then he proceeded to oh. reel up all his lines and then just drive through our spread, trying to take out our baits, took our lines. That's awesome. Out. That's exactly <laughs> what I would have done. That's fucking awesome. I respect oh. that guy. Oh. <laughs> he takes out, takes our shit out and then drives away <laughs> and we're like oh we're like thank god that's over and then sure enough he comes back for more <laughs> he kept saying you guys know better you guys know better <laughs> we're like oh. we know better what and then yeah. so finally he left and then like five minutes later we ended up catching one so it felt good after that i was like i was like we better catch this fish fast because he's gonna come yeah right <laughs> yeah that's awesome. Oh, I, I can't wait to get a fucking message about it in the oh man, I was a big I was a big fan of the podcast until I, I realized that that was Nick and now now uh, fucking all you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well the good thing is is there's no name on the boat, so I'm hoping uh <laughs> that's oh. awesome. I respect that guy though for taking out all your shit. No, that's why? Weird. Because you moved in on the spot, you were just you. He was there, he was just so drifting busy. around, doing nothing. No, it's still his spot. You're just in there. Spot. It's not like I was a wreck. It was just la la land. <laughs> I got a lot of respect for that guy. Uh, yeah, Slide in we put your fishing. kites on both both sides of him, and you and you expect him to do nothing. Yeah. I mean, the, when we when we I caught those fish on that wreck, yeah, I know, right. <laughs> When we caught those fish on that wreck that I was talking about, there was like five guys anchored on it. And we just put our spread right just in, in the middle of everybody because that's for some reason that's where they were biting. And, but luckily they were anchored so they couldn't get to us. But <laughs> so, but yeah, sometimes you got to, especially in a tournament, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I love it. You know? I, I mean, I always when I hear hear the stories about how aggressive you guys are with each other, not so much with with people out there with their kids, yeah. you know, yeah. like Nick's ruining a guy's father's son. <laughs> He's never going to go fishing <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> no, that guy. But, he, I uh, can tell you, I can promise you, he's still mad about it. That's how I'm mad sure he is. is. I'm telling he's you, we're like, going to get it. He's telling his wife, like, this fucking asshole. Blah, 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 this. We're going to get it. <laughs> we're going to get a DM about it. And I'm sure of it. You're well, going to have to I clean, went through clear the that boil. Out. Saturday at the boil where JC caught oh, wow. big multiple. We did it. I did it through the boil with like 20 anchored boats. I mean, like Jeff's looking at me. He's like, what's your plan here? I'm like, we're going to go right through them. <laughs> and if we had hooked a big multiple, guaranteed we would have lost every single one of them. <laughs> because there was just anchors everywhere. But we drifted <clears throat> through there. We were li literally bouncing baits off people's heads. And they're like, hey, hey, cool. <laughs> Like I'm gonna see him. Like nice people, nice people. Uh, Those whole of I think the guy. I think the guys at the boil fish there enough, and they probably see so many kite fishermen go by there, so they just know. They yeah. kind of know what's up. 
They were, we caught a we got <clears throat> the big king right on the boil. And we now that they on, might be mad at. Yeah. That they were <laughs> yeah. like, oh no, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They were like happy oh, yeah. but mad. It was kind of funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, they don't really care about billfish. No, no. I love how aggressive you guys are and how getting tight kites tangled up and shit like that. That shit's awesome. Yeah, we had a man at the end of the tournament. That's still right. Uh, they were in second place, right behind us, and they were. I mean, they they were good, and they were kind of right on our tail the whole tournament. And uh, maybe half hour left. I don't even know. Twenty minutes left. We were side by side, and we just we were a little bit north of them. And uh, sitting in the same depth, and you know, everybody just kind of staring off, looking for free jumpers. And we saw one, and I was like, "Oh my God, Corzo saw it!" And he's like, "There's a free jump." And he's trying to do the no point, you know. He's like, "Don't point." I was like, and I saw their motors kick in gear in the white yeah. water. And I was like, "Oh," I was like, "They saw it." <laughs> and so we just both, both boats just punch it out there, kites, you know, bait skipping everywhere. We punch it out to the depth, and we didn't really have like the right lying on it. it was probably like directly in front of our boat but i was like well if we're not catching it i was like they're definitely not catching it yeah. <laughs> so we both went at the same time and uh stopped at the same depth and when we came to a stop all our you know the kites slowly spread out and uh our te- our kite got tangled with their kite <laughs> um, so yeah i mean it happens i mean it happens more do than people, you think but i mean i'm sure it does but like do people or can people just leave it out there on the water when they get back to the dock they're just like man that that was closer to people when you get back nah, i mean like I, fucking I, we, we we both stopped the kites got tangled but you know all, all of our baits both spreads were fine so we both kind of sat there for a little bit waiting to see if we got a bite um luckily nobody got a bite um because <clears throat> like i was saying man that you know they were down on a couple fish that happen so quick they could easily catch a triple and that's it game over mm-hmm. um but you know i called them on the phone and and, and everything was fine we kind of just backed out of it and untangled but you know it's kind of part of the game you know i think yeah i think it's awesome like i would expect somebody to do the same thing if the world reverse and it's not like you know we weren't trying to just be jerks and get in the way i mean you're really trying to catch the fish but yeah you know you kind of Part of fishing uh, competitively, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's it's competitive. Yeah. How close do those guys get to each other in Los Sueños? When it's good, very pretty close. Like this year, this this week it was the fishing was awful. So but I've seen it like like rigor to rigor, like hmm. when they get pretty close. And it, it's you know, there's been some some dust ups down there <clears throat> in, in good fishing, but for the most part it's it's pretty, pretty, you know, there it says, I would say it's a similar level of competition. It's what you guys got going on. And I feel like, um, you know, people, people understand like it's going to get a little, little close and intense, but you know, as long as nobody gets hurt and should be, be, you could be left on the water, you know, ocean city can kind of get like that, but it's, it's pretty vast. I don't think people are as used to getting, getting real close so I, I feel like it, it it stresses people out a little bit more up there, but in Los Suenos, it's pretty, pretty normal, you know? And like what it, I've, what I've seen is like in Los Suenos, if you're, even though we're fishing crazy deep water, like the school is, the pack is where it is. And if you're not in there and everybody's trolling, so like you got to go out and kind of pick your way to get in there and kind of maybe try to muscle somebody off of there sometimes. So, um, it's interesting when the sail fishing is good, but it's been more of a Marlin tournament this, this, this year so far. So, but when the sail fishing is good, they, they do get in there pretty tight. And sometimes it's like, you can't just be outside and start picking. You have to be in there. Like if, and I, th- I find it rather entertaining. I haven't been fortunate enough to run a boat there, but, but, you know, being the, being the, being the mate, when I was a mate, I saw it like that, or when I was mating on the boats there, and I saw it like that, and you just had to get in there, you know. I think it's cool. I think it's except I, as long as everybody's cool with leaving it out on the water, you know, I think it's <laughs> it's yeah. fine, you know. Like you bring it back to the dock because somebody's cut in front of you <clears> or <throat> or set out in front or set up in front of you, like you guys do down there, and you're you're that worried about it. Like, I mean, what are you gonna do? Like everybody, like if that shouldn't bother you, you know. You yeah. just gotta maintain your focus. Yeah. It happens. 
I've been yelled at a couple times at home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people did it to me this weekend. Not JC, but some guys did it to me. I'm just like, why? I mean, I didn't say anything. I'm just in my head. I'm like, why? Why are you doing that? But <laughs> I just think some people don't even. I don't know if they do it for a purpose or they're not even thinking or they just yeah. don't know better. I don't know. Yeah, I'll be curious with Los Fuenos and the Ocean City if the if the fishing ever picks up and like now everybody's got a sonar, so it's not like you're you work at one spot when everybody gets in a spot like start pinging like a triple and then a couple people see that triple it'll be like you guys seeing a free jumper like you need to get there before the other guy except you know you're trolling and you're not uh you're there you're kind of looking at the free jumper but in lo- like looking at the sonar you're not like you're not always looking around and next thing you know there's a boat off your bow you know yeah 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 you know? Have you ever seen that on the fads, Nick? Did people get yeah, yeah. You can see on the fads when there's a couple boats and <laughs> you like mark a few and you're like shit. And then you're like, look at the other boat to see if he turns, and all of a sudden he turns like gosh, he just marked them too, you know. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's so <clears throat> cool that you guys can just it's just so competitive and it's just understood that it's gonna be that way. I think it's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's understood, yeah. yeah. It's gotta be. I mean, you can't it's, there's a lot of money on the line and pride and, and you know everybody just wants to do so good and <clears throat> i think it's just part of it you know mm-hmm. you just kind of got to accept it i would agree just leave it out there yeah, but you the gotta way. you gotta be okay like you know if you're gonna do that you know if you're gonna be aggressive like that then you also have to be okay when someone does it to you i would you agree know, you can't, it can't be like oh i can't believe that guy did that i mean you know i might have just done it to somebody you know an hour ago so yeah, it is what it is. You know. Yeah, obviously the guy off a of haul over was not okay with you being aggressive, Nick. <laughs> yeah, he was not okay. <laughs> he was not okay. God. <laughs> the best is like he was just going at us, and I, I just give him, I just, I just give one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we, we had a we were at the boil the first day and we were just you know i was looking at the spread but i was kind of bumping forward bumping forward and uh all of a sudden i just hear a guy he wasn't angry he was actually really nice but man i turned around he's like we're drifting here and i was like well, i turned around and man he was 20 feet off our bow <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even see him i was like oh sorry i was like yeah that's too <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean he wasn't mad but man i I wasn't paying attention, I guess. It just yeah. bumped right up on them there. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes boats just appear out of nowhere, even though they've probably yeah. been there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely do pop up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, shouldn't have been standing there. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Ooh, man. Well, yeah. man. Yep. Need a little, you, need, you need a little bit of luck. And be good with a little luck, and then yeah, exactly. Then you're really good. Yeah, yeah. then you're really good. Yeah, if you could be good with a little luck, mm-hmm. and you're you're the best. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's not enough just to be good anymore. I mean, now the competition's crazy. I mean, everybody's so good. Yeah. So you gotta, you just gotta have everything go right. <clears throat> That's right. For more than one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So one, two. It's really interesting looking at the top ten. There's only there's only three big boats. Oh no, no, there's four big boats. Four four big boats and then all the rest in our consoles. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it changes though. Like so some tournaments it'll be all big boats. You know, yeah. like it's kind of cool though. It's just it's cool that how it happens. You don't need a massive and, uh, that all ship boat. I mean, that boat's like a eighty something Viking. I think it's yeah, giant, yeah. and it's funny that that boat, you know, was able to <clears throat> catch a bunch of fish in calm weather on that aircraft carrier. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's just so cool that you could you don't need a fucking a uh, a million dollar budget uh, like a, a three million dollar sport fish to go down i was gonna say uh, they're all a million dollars yeah i was gonna <laughs> say everything's a million dollars now it's crazy yeah. but i mean yeah you could do it on a more 
reasonable budget, you know. Yeah. Whereas in Ocean City, you need fifty thousand dollars in just fuel a week. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's cool. What was that Calcutta you're telling me they're adding this year? How much was it? They might. Me and my brother have a theory that it's a White Marlin Open's 50th anniversary. And I don't know if they've, they've actually done this yet, but we have a feeling like they might do a $50,000 winner take all. I don't know who's wow. going to get in it because people were like, when they when they came out with the 20,000, they were they're they're like, oh, nobody's going to get in that. And like 100 boats got in it. <laughs> so that's cool yeah so I thought we but, need a twenty thousand dollar car yeah yeah, yeah but you in. but it's not <laughs> up of pure but you could just call it the carulo jc's cutter <laughs> you know you could write five names on it and put it in a hat you know whereas you know if you're in the money there it's just i just i love the premise because it's such a big tournament those tournaments are so big up there and the other hand it's like somebody's going to go catch a 90 pounder and it does it's not always the team that's the teams that are putting in the work and or or in the money you know like you know some people i know people that literally like fish their boat offshore for three days during that tournament you know and it's like they have as good a chance as anybody to catch a a 90 pound white model it just annoys me because i've been trying real hard for a long time (laughs) oh man so, well, not, so you need, you need that that thing called luck. Yeah, I, it's never been a thing in my life. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. So, the just only go, luck I have is just being on this boat with my people. That's just it. go steer, <laughs> go steal JC's steering wheel. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sounds for sounds now. lucky. So, uh, somebody somebody once told me it's not the propel, it's not the it's not these wheels, it's this wheel. You know. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's true. So, all right. Well, yeah. good stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Thanks, JC. Yeah, thank good meeting you, dude. After fun, JC, too, man. Uh, we'll get JC back on after uh, this, the year's over so he could fill us in more with some more winning. Yeah. yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe have a jacket on. We'll see. Oh, man, that would be nice. That would be nice. We'll see. Uh, yeah. I'll follow Nick around next tournament. We'll oh, see. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I do want to say thanks to Ed and Valerie Dunn on the DAC for having my brother along, my brother and I along for the whole week uh, for Los Buenos. So they don't listen to podcasts, but I appreciate it. (laughs) And the the crew and the guys, the Clemico, the captain and Mark, the Atlantic captain. So Mm -hmm. appreciate it, guys. Thank you.